Uh, yes, I think we have a quorum. Just so. <laughs> and uh, so we, we are going to start the session on the uh, machine detector interface with Bernard Holzer, our his representative, Mike. Let's go ahead. You have 25 you. minutes. Thank you. So Bernhard apologizes, he can't make it to the meeting. So I've taken information from these people. So there's been some progress since the last meeting which you go, I want to show you. Uh, what Frank showed you yesterday was effectively yesterday's news, so I'm going to show you today's news. The work still goes on, there's still a lot to be done. And what I'm, I promise to do is I'm going to transmit your feedback back to the people that actually do the work. So, I remind you that we have two different uh, IP designs which we're pursuing at the same time. The one design, it's a small crossing angle with no crab waste design. Well, this is a baseline, this is a CERN design if you like. Also, the design um, uses the um, chromatistic correction la LEP in the arcs. And the second is a more ambitious 30 millirad crab waste design which is done by our colleagues at BIMP and CERN recently has put some effort into it as well. So these are the two. I think it's important to have two options at this stage, and we should pursue both at the moment. Let's start with a small crossing angle approach. Uh, basically, there's not a lot of progress happening there. Um, what was shown in Beijing um, during last year is still valid. As I said, the, uh, well, the, the good news is that the chromatistic correction, I'm going to show a plot, um, a la LEP seems to work. The momentum acceptance, which I'm going to show again, is still not good enough. And what I'm going to show, which is new and has not been shown before, is the synchrotron radiation power at the interaction region. Um, this is the design which has been shown before. I don't want to go through this. Uh, apart from saying this is now, <clears throat> um, this is the interaction point. This is 800 meters from it. Um, this is the design for FCC HH. This is the design, the CERN design for FCC EE. You see, strangely, um, the FCC EE interaction region design is actually longer than the, uh, the one at, uh, uh, for the 100 machine. And when we leave the 800 meters, the beams are still diverging and have a distance of the order of two meters. Um, so what is new and has not been shown before is uh, the, uh, the, there's now a calculation of the synchro radiation load and it is 138 kilowatts per IP. Okay, so this by itself I think is not, is not a disaster, it's, it's fine. Uh, okay, we need to see then exactly how we're going to shield the detector from, from all this. But as far as the synchro radiation budget is concerned, this is not an alarming figure. The chromatistic correction is done with a series with two families of sextuples, uh, two families of sextuples, the horizontal and three in the vertical because we have different uh, phase advance. And uh, the results you can see here, for instance here with red <coughs> chromaticity actually is getting reduced. We're going from one IP to the other IP. Arc, arc, arc. We have three arcs and two IPs. You might think this is strange, but the way that uh, we're dealing with the with the ring now is 12 arcs and four equidistant interaction points. This, of course, can change easily, but this is what we're using now. Uh, so this um, is to be contra uh, contrasted with the local chromatistic correction that appears to give much better results, which I'm going to show later is the approach of the BINP. But anyway, a uh, well-matched W function shows the creation uh, of chromaticity, the IR, and the compensation of, of it during one arc. This works well. Um, then I'm going to show a few plots which you might have seen before about the momentum acceptance. And uh, because it's very crowded in the next transparency uh, and it's not very clear, I'm going to tell you what. So the, the blue line effectively is when the sextuples are not used. So of course, you don't get any good results. Then you put the sextuples on. And then finally, you match them. And so you need to pay attention to the red line. And I have two, si two kinds of plots. The left side plots, I'll, I'll move to it here, are for a, a LEP-like beta star, and the ones on the right are for a beta star of TLEP, of FCC EE. So these are the relevant plots, if you like, X and Y plane. As I said, the important thing is the red. So you see here that delta P over P, uh, the momentum where the uh, tunes are like stable, 
um, are very, very small, are of the order of 0.2%. This is clearly not good enough because it reminds you that the, uh, what we need is a momentum acceptance of the order of 2%, plus or minus 2%. And here we get uh, much, much, about a factor of 10 less. Anyway, so there's work to be done here. So the summary for the small crossing angle, the CERN design, um, we've tried the LEP approach with the chromaticity and um, it works. Momentum acceptance is still a factor of 10 worse than needed, but actually we can reproduce the LEP momentum acceptance in the previous plot you've seen. What we see for the LEP-like design is more or less what we've got at LEP. So we're doing something right. So, uh, and another thing we need to take home from this is that the local, we need the local chromaticity correction as is done as BIMP. So let me go to the second crab waste approach. Um, so this, actually I have to say that this approach is now more complete than the CERN approach because more manpower has gone into it. Um, there is a new and improved IR design that addresses some of the criticism of the earlier design, which I'm going to show in a minute. Uh, things like the synchronous radiation arriving, shining at the interaction region, uh, region uh, there was the fact that there were two bends there, these have been addressed. And also now this IR design has been married to the arc optics, so we can actually close the ring now. We can actually run particles in a computer, which actually go around the ring. So finally, we have the first results regarding dynamic aperture, which is something new, which we've not shown before. Um, so this is the work of Anton. <clears throat> He's actually studied two working points, both of which give good results. And the cha changes since the last meeting are he's moved the, the first dipoles about 20 meters further away from the IP. May, he makes the dipoles longer, weaker, that improves a lot of secret radiation power lost um, in, that, in that area. He got rid of the achromatic bend, the second bend, which made the beam line parallel, as, as you'll see in a minute. Um, so these changes have allowed to move the fans of synchro radiation further away from the IP without increasing the length of the interaction region because we don't want to go further than the 800 meters we had before. Um, he also installed an extra sex support to control the third order chromaticity. Um, these are the parameters that he used, which is the standard parameters we, we, we have in mind. Uh, one millimeter beta star Y. Um, here, the final focus layout, uh, here the situation is complex um, because there is an area where both the machine and the experiment claim territory. There was a few emails that have been exchanged recently. Um, so as a first iteration, and Gigi can corroborate that, we've agreed with Gigi that the uh, grosso modo of the area, which is smaller than 100 millirad, uh, belongs to the machine. but with a nota bene that the luminometer might fit there. We're going to hear later on. And the area which is greater than 100 millirad is under the control of the experiment. And we've also put some range of values for the solenoidal magnetic field. We said that its strength would be between 2 and 4 tesla as the first iteration, and the length between 7 and 13 meters. I insist that this is not the final word. People can change their minds, but we needed a working point to start with. Um, yes? Yes? The axis around which this is given. Um, is so I take it as a cone, yes. I take it as a cone around the IP. Is it around the exiting beams or is it around the uh, median of the two beams? It's around the, the center of the detector, so irrespective. You, you, you'll see in a minute, I think here, it's, it's shown, this angle here is 100 millirad. This is, in the Y plane it is not shown, but you know, I take it as a cone which actually is from the center of the experiment. So you take it as around the median between the two, or the bisector between Correct. the Correct. two. Correct. And actually, yeah. as you will see, we try to, be, to stay way clear of these 100 millirads in this, in this design. So this is how the design looks. There's, there's the, the crossing angle of 30 millirads in the X, and in the Y, of course, there's no crossing angle. You see your two final focus quadruples starting at two meters, going all the way to 5.5 meters. I think the next plot is a bit, uh, it's a blow up of this region. 
with the um, sketch of the solenoids. So this is my 100 milliride line. I'm trying to stay clear of that. My two quadruples are really clear of this. However, and this is my main magnetic field that goes, that is two Tesla in this case, and it goes all the way to six and a half meters from zero. So it's 13 meters long. Um, there is a screening solenoid here to compensate for this solenoidal field which has a value of also of two Tesla, so the field inside here is zero, if you like. And on top of that, there is a compensating solenoid which is much smaller. This is actually, you know, this big, and it has actually, I'm told, a rectangular shape. And this is, is a very strong, it has an eight Tesla field because you need to compensate for this reason here where the, uh, the beam sees the full two Tesla field. So this is actually eight Tesla because it covers one fourth of the distance. So you see, we've tried, the, the, these are actually way inside the 100 milliride cone and what is getting close to our 100 milliride cone is our compensating solenoid. Okay, this is a, a sketch, this is not even a design. Okay, so I think we can stay clear of the 100 milliride without too many problems and even give some more to the experiments. I guess Morgan is going to tell us what happens in here later on and uh, we sh we're going to find a solution eventually. My first question to the guys doing this design is if we can move this actually here. Um, and the answer was no, but I want to insist and find out exactly why. Anyway, what you can see from here is that this is a rather complicated design, right? It's not a simple interaction region. There's a lot of things that are happening. We need to make it right from the beginning and have a decent design. Um, the, uh, now, there's the old and the new uh, uh, Anton's um, design. This is the old one, this is the new one. There's not a lot you can say here. The, uh, this is the square root of beta. So it goes, the beta goes to about 10 kilometers in both designs. Um, uh, the final focus telescope, this is the old design with the two um, uh, dipoles quite close to the IP. The new design, uh, the two uh, uh, dipoles have been moving further out and there's a little sextuple here um, that helps. Um, and now the interaction region layout as, it, as we know it, it was like this with a, this peculiar fish shape with the two bends and the separation at the end of the arc after six, uh, 700 meters of about three meters. And the latest design by Anton looks like this, which is a lot, um, lot nicer. We get only one bend. Uh, we get a separation of only 0.7 meters. This can change if we don't think this is sufficient, but anyway. But this is a real, really nice interaction region uh, layout. So the strength so the, of the magnets. Now, the synchro radiation fans, where does the synchro radiation light point to? This is the old design. This is zero, you see. And this is um, one meter, two meters, etc. So you, you see, you know, from this band, uh, something was shining directly at the detector. Um, and uh, these, all these ones are actually very close to, to the heart of the detector. So the new design looks as follows. It's much better. All these fans now are, this one is a two, two and a half meters. This is uh, two meters, et cetera, et cetera. This is a very improved design. So um, I think I'm very happy to actually see that there's a lot of progress done here. Um, I don't have the power figures, if you like, for, for, this, for this design yet. It used to be worse than the design that I showed you earlier for uh, the CERN design, but uh, this is a great improvement. I'm sure that we, by using um, strategic um, stops, we can stop all these things from entering the detector. Okay, the energy acceptance, uh, as I said, uh, Anton has used two working points. This is a 0 0.6 point. Um, he gets a nice momentum acceptance of a bit more than plus or minus 2%. Uh, this is just a tuned scan. And this is his second working point, which is at 0 0.54. Again, he gets a bit more than 2%. So this is already promising. And of course, this is not sufficient. We need to also see the dynamic aperture uh, plots to actually say if this is uh, something which we can work on or not. But already from this point is, is promising. I remind you that the CERN design, the first approach, 
the useful region was around here. Uh, this is the parameters he used. And his summary was that um, the closed ring is ready because now we have interaction region from BIMP. We have the arc from CERN, and both of them have been married to one design. There's are two working points. Um, at the end of the IR, the distance between the beams is 0.7 meters. The energy acceptance is good enough. Uh, chromaticity of momentum compaction is reasonable. I didn't show that. And uh, secret radiation fans are shifted away from the IP. So regarding dynamic aperture, um, the two plots, as I said, are, show um, the, are not the last word. It's a necessary but not sufficient con condition. Uh, the CERN team has used the BIP design to use the CERN layout to produce the first uh, dynamic aperture plots. And the plot you can see is here. So the dynamic aperture for on momentum particles is seven sigma, which as a first iteration, which is not sufficient, but as a first iteration is good enough. And as we move away to particles that don't have the nominal momentum, you see that the, uh, this, uh, drop, uh, this curve actually drops um, at the order of between minus 0.9% uh, percent and uh, plus 0.2%. So we get a total, a total um, momentum acceptance from dynamic aperture of about 1% and we need 2%. So this is very encouraging. So this actually shows the, uh, the minimum aperture of the entire XY phase space. Um, so this is not only X or only Y, this is the combination. And this is 100 turns at 120 GV. This plot actually takes a week of CPU time to produce, so it's not so easy because you need to track particles for 100 turns and do it uh, many times. Um, this, I have to say that this is using the old uh, interaction region of, uh, of Anton without all his improvements. Uh, we will work on having the, the same plot with the new interaction region. Um, so dynamic capacitor is limited, um, a nominal momentum of seven sigma, which is low as efficient and breaks down for momentum deviations, as you see there. there. Um, this is not sufficient, but it shows that we do have the tools to make progress. So this is a very, very encouraging plot. So my conclusions already, and I'm, I think I've not used my 25 minutes, I hope. Um, problems are not easy, so this is not an easy business. Good progress has been made since the last meeting. We do have the tools to actually make progress and the first dynamic aperture plots are encouraging, although not yet sufficient. Thank you. Beautiful results. Impressive. I will, I will inform the people that actually did the work. They are listening. Do we have questions? Please start with the first one. So my first question is, when people are discussing the aperture, is this uh, um, the aperture for a beam which is just propagated to the machine, or is it for a beam which is actually colliding? I, I don't know. You don't know? I, I think it's colliding beams, but uh, we have to. Otherwise, why do you need a week to actually do uh, one point? Mm, yeah. The moment of acceptance, I mean, it's for colliding beams. Maybe not, it's not included. I, I cannot. <coughs> the answer is I don't know. Okay. Uh, right. The second question is the, um, <coughs> this magnetic field shielding issue. Uh, what is the allowance? What is their point about shielding two, three, four Tesla uh, magnetic field. When we discussed it uh, briefly um, two days ago, they were, and I told them they have to do the same design for four Tesla, they were horrified. Uh, of course, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything, okay? But then they said, oh, but then we would need, say, 16 Tesla magnet here instead of an A Tesla magnet here, and how are we gonna get this and all that? So uh, the first reaction was not very positive, but I'm sure the second reaction would be a bit more rational, eventually. Um, 
you know, it's, it's a question of coordination here. I don't know what, of course, everybody, the machine wants this to be zero, and the experiments want, want this to be very high. So at some point, we need to have a, but my understanding is that the trade-off between two for Tesla and four Tesla is simply cost of the detector. At some point, we need to have a better understanding of how this works. Right. I think it's, a, it's an important exercise to balance this particular uh, aspect, which may cost luminosity, uh, with the advantage of the higher magnetic field, which spreads things out better, or the bigger detector, I think. Uh, we also see that we're not considering at the moment a one Tesla field, which I know that you would have liked us to do. I, I think the Aleph was one and a half Tesla, and nobody ever complained this was too little, so. What does Jeezy have to say on this? It depends on uh, Aleph and two Tesla because two Tesla were possible. One point, I mean, what, one point five because at the time one point five were possible. So CMS has four te three point eight Tesla because this is what is possible. Now none of the, the two detectors has been designed with an opt optimization of a particle flow, and maybe that the optimization will result in um, two point three. I don't know. Simply, it's work to be done. Huh? The idea that this detector would have been optimized for particle flow and the magnet is an, magnetic field is an important tool. Is this uh, will result in three Tesla? I do not know. So it's not a simply a question of cost because the, the low field, you just need to increase the uh, segmentation of your uh, calorimeters and all that. It's not, it's not only that. It's not only that. Right, it, it depends on what energy you are thinking of. For all of 1.5 Tesla, at the Z-pole was probably just fine, and CMS is running at red seeing jets at much, high, much higher energies, and therefore Tesla is a big advantage. So we've done a lot of these studies as a function of jet energy, where you gain in your confusion term in the particle flow, and I think once you put all cards on the table, it is a question that you can answer. Do you have a feeling what the answer might be? At 350? Right. It, it, it's not independent of the size of the detector you're assuming, etc. But, but I, I think higher than 1.5 is, is definitely gaining, gaining something, yeah. Yes, I remember that the, the, uh, the performance of the particle flow in Aleph was starting to degrade at LEP2 with respect to LEP1. So we had already the limit there. Other questions? I don't see any, so thank you again, Mike.